Oh, no way. Then there's no. I'm looking at you, Jim. I'm gonna hear the name and I'm gonna get PTSD. But the cream runs to the top. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Well, this week, funny enough, I've been seeing a lot of chatter in the Rangers community, and a lot of people are acting like the sky is falling down. I'm here to tell you it's not, and it's not at all because they want to overpay Barkley Goodrow by a million or so on his AAV. Barkley Goodrow is exactly what the Rangers need. It's exactly what the Rangers set out to do. And it's exactly what every fan wanted after the Tom Wilson incident. We wanted more grit. We wanted more defensive players. We wanted more penalty killers. We wanted to add an element of sandpaper at depth and experience to this team. Well, you're getting a two-time cup winner. You're getting a penalty killer. You're getting that. So he's exactly what this team needs. And there's a lot of people just saying that, oh, well, how, how that's going to mess up our cap situation. No. Overpaying a player by a million on his AAV is not going to kill your cap situation at all. It's not. What's going to kill your cap situation, and yeah, you, you, you need someone who could protect the kids to a point, yes. The, the protection thing is a little overblown, but you still need team toughness. And Barkley Goodrow is a part of team toughness. That's the type of player that this team needs. Stat Boy Steven and I have talked about it on our own group chats. You need gritty players that bring that element of skill. That is what Goudreau brings you. He brings you experience. He's a two-time cup winner. He's a penalty killer. He will block those shots that the team needs to block in the final minutes of a game to help win a cup. Yeah, those are the types of guys that you need. And the Rangers went out and they got that type of guy. They gave up a seventh round pick to do it just so they can negotiate with him. You know, possibly give him an extra year. I get it. The term doesn't look great for a 28-year-old. And you, 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 you people look to Cal Clutterbuck and say, oh, well, his body broke down. Cal Clutterbuck was always an injury problem prone player, even before he signed that deal. Cal Clutterbuck plays an extremely physical style of game. He runs around and hits everything with a pulse. He's different from Barkley Goudreau. Barkley Goudreau does not run around taking hit runs at everything that moves. Barkley Goudreau is a physical player that will win those battles if necessary. Barkley Goudreau will not shy away from physical contact. But he's not a wrecking ball like Cal Clutterbuck or Matt Martin, where their sole purpose is to run around, cause havoc by throwing their bodies around, and then you know picking up points that you know teams give up to them by making those forced errors from that physical play. So if you really want to point to a scapegoat, if there's ever cap troubles for, you know, down the line when you're looking at the, you know, the players on the ELCs getting to their new deals, look at Chris Kreider. Look at 6.5 million for a guy who was to be 30 years old, right? Shortly after that season and look to Jacob Truba for eight million for play that hasn't even come close to eight million per year. And I get why those guys got their deals. I get it. But it doesn't mean that it was the right move during a rebuild. To go give Jacob Truba eight million to be your number one defenseman, he had a lot to prove. You were bidding against yourself, Jeff Gordon, and you kind of cost the team quite a bit with that eight million. He wanted to give him six. He wanted to be there. Tell him to take six. If not, flip him. Flip him. And go after somebody else. Chris Kreider. You you should have dealt him at the 2019 draft. Joe Sackick was interested. Didn't want to give up the 16th overall pick that year. Okay. I can't blame him. He had his eyes on Alex Newhook. Took Alex Newhook. Kind of, kind of saw that. A lot of people kind of saw it. But... You gave a six and a half million dollar AAV to a player with a no movement clause for the first what four years of his contract. You can't do that, and that ties into another thing with Goodrow. If this contract doesn't have any type of no move or no trade protection, then what is everybody worrying about? Because it's a movable deal. It's a movable deal. It's also a buyoutable deal. It's not even a buyout-proof deal either. 
because a guy like him is probably not going to get signing bonuses. And you probably, and, and I know that people question, oh, well, you can't buy out a player that's under an AAV of $4 million. No, that's only the second buyout window. So I've, I've went over that with Steven. I, I know I know what the rules are on that. So no, uh, you can buy out Barkley Goodrow. So Barkley Goodrow is not going to cost this team anything. He's going to give them something that they were missing. And you know what? If if you people are going to complain about, I, I don't even want to get into that comment. I'm not going to get into it. I have uh, I I've already voiced what I said about that. But um, I'm going to tell you right now, Barkley Goodrow is what this team needs, and I don't know why. I, I get that the deal isn't ideal. But stop acting like the sky is falling. Stop it. Stop. It's 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 what we talked about before. It was identifying the player that you need and going to get him. And now I say again, he would have gotten it on the open market. And he would have gotten more. And the Rangers and if the Rangers did overpay, again, it's basically the Cal Clutterbuck deal that he signed the last time. And they're only paying 0.3 more, and every Islander fan would take that deal in a heartbeat. No, they're only paying 100k more than Clutterbuck. Oh, even even better. So, yeah. And, yeah. and to me, Barkley Goodrow is a better player. Cal Clutterbuck, to me, that line runs through Casey Sezikis. That identity line that the Islanders, mm -hmm. their fourth line, that line runs through Sezikis. If Casey Sezikis is gone, possible. <laughs> Or know how they're gonna I, I don't know if they're gonna identify him with with their newfound cap space or not i would imagine they probably would but if casey sezikas leaves you're gonna see a drastic dip in production from those two because <laughs> casey is the heart and soul of that line and anybody that tries to tell you otherwise i don't know what they're watching and i gotta so, say one of the guys that's intriguing to me is morgan baron they that we we keep going back to that name that if they don't if they end up don't going not going for, uh, say, for instance, some of these other free agent centers like Sean Corrali or Casey Zizigas or something like that. Um, Morgan Barron, I think, could step in. Now, we still talk about upgrading or making Filipino tougher. Uh, that could either come three ways. Trade, uh, coaching, or, well, they just, in the, or maybe he just improves. Uh, I... I'm not sure if that happens, but I, I I love the kid. I don't think it's happening with the New York Rangers. Um, so what do you think about the Barkley Goodrow deal? Did the Rangers make the right move? I'll, I'll answer that. Yes, but there was a reason why John and I were celebrating on on Sunday, on Saturday. I mean, anyway, you don't like the AAV? Put it all down in the comments below. If you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.